This story focuses on a beautiful woman named Emma Brackett carrying out a task from a man over the phone. Okay, gotta go. After completing her mission in Buenos Aires, Argentina, Emma sheds her disguise and reverts to her original appearance. Then she heads home. Upon arriving home, Emma's two children welcomed her. She tells Dave Brackett, her husband, that she has just returned from Nebraska, conducting domestic travel as a manager at the company where she works. However, in reality, she has just returned from abroad. A little while later, Dave congratulates her on their wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary. Emma's expression immediately turns to guilt because she forgot that today is their seventh wedding anniversary, making her feel quite guilty. The following day, as Emma was preparing breakfast for her family, Raj, who always manages her work, suddenly reported that the client was satisfied with Emma's job in Buenos Aires. They had received payment for the work. Raj warns Emma not to be too conspicuous because her photo has resurfaced on the wanted list on a dark website. Yep, I got it. Fortunately, Raj has managed to remove the bounty posting. Raj then assigned a new task to Emma, but Emma refused because she had just arrived home. Raj persisted because the client wanted their best agent, Emma, to complete the task. Moreover, the client was willing to offer a large payment and the money was enough to protect Emma from being pursued by Sovereign, a group known to have put a bounty on her on a dark website. Who wants pancakes? Me! That night, Dave invited Emma to go on a vacation to celebrate their wedding anniversary. However, Emma declined because she was worried about disappointing her family. After all, every time she made a promise, Emma always failed to keep it. Not giving up hope, Dave gave his wife an outfit to be used as a fantasy in their husband and wife relationship. However, Emma had another plan. She invited Dave to meet the next night at a bar, pretending to be strangers using aliases. They would act to meet at the place and rent a luxurious hotel room. The next day, Emma shared the plan with Kelly. Emma asked Kelly to take care of their children. In short that evening, Emma arrived first at the Royal Grand, a luxury hotel where they had agreed to meet. Meanwhile, Dave was stuck in traffic elsewhere, and his phone signal was lost when he tried to notify Emma. At the bar, Emma was approached by an older man named Bob Kitterman, Bob Kitterman, who had been watching her for a while, and introduced himself. Emma initially did not want to get to know him, but she eventually introduced herself to the old man. And Alice Overby. Emma lied to him, claiming to be Alice Overby and working in finance for a company. Bob tried to get closer to Emma, but suddenly, Dave, who was late, finally arrived. Realizing that Emma was not very responsive to him and kept looking at a man who had just arrived at the corner of the bar, Bob eventually asked for permission to leave Emma for a moment. Dave then approached and pretended to introduce himself under his alias, Jack Dawson. At the same time, Emma assumed Alice Overby's identity. Well, I'm Jack. Alice Overby. As Dave ordered drinks, suddenly Bob came again, announcing that he had just won a big contract. He wanted to treat Alice and Jack to celebrate his achievement. After drinking together, Bob then gave his room number in case Emma and Dave wanted to continue the party in his room. 11 is the sweet number, and on that note, pow. In short, upon arriving at the room, Emma played music and asked Dave to wait for her on the bed while she changed clothes in the bathroom. However, it seemed Emma intentionally delayed until Dave eventually fell asleep. Emma left a note on a piece of paper and then left Dave while checking the stopwatch on her phone. It turns out that Emma visited Bob's room. Indeed, Bob was a hitman who had just killed a diplomat. Bob felt lucky when he accidentally saw the most wanted assassin, Anna Peller, standing before him. After making sure he had the right person, that was why Bob gave his room number. However, instead of intending to kill and collect the bounty from Sovereign, Bob was confused about why Anna had left the notorious assassin syndicate. Moreover, Sovereign only wanted Anna apprehended but not killed. Here all secret is revealed. Emma is a hitwoman named Anna Peller, who previously worked for an assassin syndicate, Sovereign. However, for reasons unknown, Anna fled and changed her identity, so the leader of the Sovereign syndicate named Gwen Carver is hunting her. With a profit share of 60% for Bob and 40% for Emma, Bob invites Emma to collaborate because Bob is also not a hitman from any syndicate and only works for the highest bidder. If Emma refuses, then he will contact Sovereign and receive a reward for her. Of course, Emma refuses and states that she already has an intermediary and does not intend to work with Bob. In addition, it turns out that Emma poisoned the drink Bob had at the bar, and within minutes, Bob would die. Oh, Bob. Dave, who has woken up, calls and asks for Emma's whereabouts. Suddenly, Bob, who has not died and only became blind from the poison, shoots Emma brutally. 
Thanks to the self-defense skills and survival abilities she acquired from scouting activities, Emma easily dodges. After hanging up the call from Dave, Emma immediately defeats Bob with ease. Done with her business, Emma returns to the room and continues the brutal action previously delayed with Dave. The next day, as they gathered with Dave and the children, Emma appeared serious, sending messages to Raj, informing him of what had happened the night before, even ignoring Dave, who had asked her several times. Soon after, Raj called, making Dave even more curious about what Emma was hiding. Raj, once again said that Emma should draw only a little attention because this incident would become news and Gwen Carver would soon find out about Emma's whereabouts. Raj also instructed Emma to head to the airport immediately. Meanwhile, inside the house, Dave received a call from Kelly, who informed him that there was a murder news at the Royal Grand Hotel and sent him the news link. Dave was shocked when he saw that the victim was the man they had talked to at the bar the night before. Feeling panicked, Dave then told Emma that the news mentioned the police were suspecting a man and a woman who had talked with the victim, who were none other than themselves. Dave confident that he and Emma were not the culprits, planned to contact the police first before the police could find their faces and identities. However, since they had used fake identities at the hotel, it would only strengthen the suspicion that they were the murderers. Eventually, Dave decided against it and agreed with Emma to wait for the police to come to them. In a state of panic, Emma stated that she had to go to the airport tomorrow for work reasons. Even though Dave opposed it, he eventually let his wife go. The next day, after Emma said goodbye to their two children, Dave said he would pick Emma up at the domestic arrivals airport on Monday when Emma returned. After Emma left, Dave continued to monitor news about Bob's murder on social media. The police had found photos of Dave and Emma from the hotel's CCT footage, and it was only a matter of time before they would uncover his identity. Dave grew increasingly panicked, but when he tried calling Emma, her number was inactive. Even on the day Emma was supposed to arrive, she was not on the list of local flights she was supposed to be on. A Sir, I already searched, and there is nothing e else. Dave's fears became real at the parking area. Two NIPD detectives approached him. The detectives interrogated Dave, asking about the deceased Bob found at the Royal Grand Hotel and why Dave used an alias. Dave explained that he had only met Bob that night and that using an alias was a silly role-playing idea to pretend not to know his wife. Of course, the detectives found Dave's reasoning implausible. Not long after, intelligence agent Inc. Carver entered and informed Dave that his wife was not the real Emma. The story from Carver shocked Dave. According to the intelligence agent, the woman who was Dave's wife had stolen the identity of a woman who died eight years ago. For the last seven years, she had successfully lived her fake life. The agent showed Dave a photo of his wife at the Buenos Aires airport the previous week, making Dave realize that Emma had lied to him. Dave also eventually discovered Bob's true identity, the man he met in the bar where he was a hitman. Dave was further shocked to learn that Raj was not the supervisor of the company where Emma worked, but he was the person who found clients for Emma's job as a hitman. Dave also found out that his wife was Anna Peller, the most wanted killer on several continents. At first, Dave thought it was just a big joke, but he soon realized that everyone in the room took the topic very seriously. After the agent completed the interrogation process, Dave immediately returned home. He searched for Emma's secret belongings until he found a hidden safe containing a wig, fake passports, and firearms. As all the truths began to unfold, and although Dave started to doubt his wife, he wanted to have a conversation with the woman he had married before deciding to part ways because he loved her so much. Dave also refused Agent Carver's attempts to search his home. Meanwhile, in Berlin, several members of the Sovereign had been following Emma as she attempted to escape. Despite Emma's attempts to deceive them and get out of Rod's car, they continued to track her every move. Eventually, Emma managed to incapacitate one of the pursuers. Although she successfully escaped the firefight with the remaining Sovereign members, Raj had to lose his life after being shot. Meanwhile, at home Dave contacted every number on some business cards he found in Emma's secret safe, and one of the numbers successfully connected. Emma received the call, and Dave quickly learned that Emma was in Berlin from that phone number. Dave, who wanted to discuss this matter in person, disregarded Emma's prohibition from following her to Berlin. Long story short, Emma and Dave eventually reunited at a bar in Berlin. Emma finally came clean about her past. She admitted that her real name was Anna, and since childhood, she had been trained as an assassin. Her father was a secret agent who decided to retire and start his own business. Started a private security company named Sovereign. New facts revealed that Sovereign was a private security company built by her father alongside intelligence agent Gwen Carver, the agent who had exposed Emma's secrets previously. 
Carver took Anna with her when her father was killed. Anna had been introduced to violence at a young age and trained to kill for years. She trusted every word Carver said and believed that every task assigned to her at that time was to eliminate crime by killing evil people. However, as she grew older, Anna realized it was all lies from Carver. One day, Anna met Dave when he had a job in Boston, and for the first time, she felt that there was someone who genuinely appreciated and cared about her. Since then, Anna only wanted an everyday life with Dave. Even though she still took a job once or twice a year, it was only to protect her family from pursuing the sovereign group. Although every detail she said about herself was a lie, Emma pleaded with Dave to believe that her feelings all along had been genuine love. Emma also claimed that she had fled to Berlin to obtain Canadian passports so that Dave and the children could start a new life. Emma promised that if she resolved all the issues with Sovereign, she would no longer want to be a contract killer. After learning everything about his wife, Dave said he still loved Emma. I love you. I know, I love you too. And I love her family. While in a conversation, without realizing it, suddenly, some Sovereign members arrived and surrounded them. The Sovereign members drugged Emma and took them away. When she regained consciousness, Emma found out that Carver had not only kidnapped her and Dave but also their two children. Carver then offered Anna a second chance to rejoin Sovereign. Reluctantly, Anna agreed that Carver wouldn't harm her children. Decided to do this, Carver then instructed Anna to kill Dave. According to Carver, Dave was an obstacle to all his plans. A few moments later, Anna led Dave into the woods. While walking, Anna told Dave that a sniper was currently watching them. As they continued to move, Anna considered what plan she would execute. Suddenly, Anna shot Dave, causing him to fall. <laughs> then a female Sovereign member confirmed that Dave had died. While the woman was examining Dave's body, Emma attacked her just as a tree obstructed the sniper's view that was watching them. After Emma killed the woman, Dave unexpectedly regained consciousness. It turned out that Emma's previous shot had been positioned at a safe spot, causing only minor injuries to Dave. Surprisingly, Emma also managed to kill the sniper while the sniper was looking for a better vantage point to locate. Emma and Dave then returned to where their children were. After eliminating another guard, Emma and Dave divided their tasks. Dave would rescue the children while Emma would take out Carver. Emma, who had returned to the Sovereign building, once again confronted the remaining henchmen of Carver. After facing some difficulties, Emma finally managed to defeat the woman. In short, Carver, attempting to escape, was surprised by Emma's presence. After shooting Carver, Emma did not immediately kill him because she knew her shot had hit a fatal spot. Therefore, Emma slowly walked away to reunite with her family. The movie ends with a scene where Emma and her family return to an everyday and happy life as before. We're gonna find someplace good. <laughs>